the time has come to start the bonding process with Suga, our new sugar glider. So this involves taking his new pouch and sticking it under our shirt. My squad, let's do this. Don't be afraid. We're your friends. Hey guys, we will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Please subscribe. Hi, Shaga. Don't worry, I'm here. I'm just taking you out. Mm -hmm. I've got a treat for you. Would you like a little bit of cashew? Hmm? Want a cashew? Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Yummy, right? Yum. You want it or are you full? Here. You can have it. No? Okay. So I'm just gonna grab you real quick. Don't panic. It's okay. I know. I know. Don't worry. And screw this. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I know. Oh my gosh, I wish. Yeah. I know. It's okay. Oh no. OMG. Okay. So before I wear sugar under my shirt just gonna get him used to the movement of like being walked around this is like the time of the day when he is the sleepiest so my hopes is that he will just fall asleep i've got snacks i've got different nuts cashews um different things to like give him gifts like every now and then through the day but right now he's freaking out because he's actually on me. Oh, and there's Sahara. Sahara. Sahara here. Keep Sahara away. I know. Here, let me put you under my shirt. Okay, but let me first screw that. The tighten these. Yes. Oh, I know, I know. Make this. Oh, I know, I know. It's okay. Here. Here, sugar. Would you like an apple? Oh. Here, it's a cashew. It's a cashew. It's a cashew. Isn't that scary, guys? I told you, this bonding process is crazy. I'm going to do this just for a few hours and then put him back. Um... But this is what it's like. I'm, I, I'm gonna put him into my shirt right now. Just one sec, I'm sweating guys, cause I'm kind of nervous. I'm gonna wait till my sweating's done. Guys, if you're new to the vlogs, welcome to the channel. My name is Mikey Bustos. This here, this here is Suga. Um, and this here is the Mabuhai Squad Farmhouse. A home my partner and I built over the past five years and as you can see, we're animal lovers here. So I'm bonding with Sugar, our new sugar glider. He's two years old. So the bonding process will be a little more challenging because usually you would bond with younger sugar gliders. Uh, but I'm gonna try. You just kind of have to bribe him with treats. Earlier I gave him a little piece of almond. Little piece of almond. Okay, okay, okay. You can into my shirt now. Sahara's going crazy. She's like, what is that? Well, she's like, what is that? No, Sahara. Here, you want an almond? Yeah. Almond, yay. Okay, he likes almonds. All right, guys, so I think our baby is asleep. Even though he's not a baby, he's two years old. Um, he's calmed down. Normally, I would have my shirt over the pouch, but guys, I'm sweating. And I don't want to like overheat him right now. Um, 
But look, he's sleeping, I'm talking, he isn't doing that noise. For those of you who don't know what a sugar glider is, it's this marsupial, meaning it's one of those mammals with a pouch, like kangaroos and koala bears um, and possums and things like that. Uh, and it's called a sugar glider because they can glide. They're like flying squirrels. They have this like skin that attaches from their wrist to their ankles and they can glide in the treetops. They're really interesting animals. Um, I had sugar gliders back in the early 2000s and I was really into them. They're not a pet for everybody because they're awake at night. So the only way you can enjoy them is if you're a night owl or if you bond with them during the day, like when you wear them. But they don't really do anything but sleep in the day. So um, yeah, they're not a pet for everyone. They, they pee everywhere. They'll even pee on you. They have a certain smell. Um, their diet is not easy to prepare. Uh, but we adopted Suga here from our friend Enrique Hill, who is a Filipino actor here in the Philippines. He called us and said, Mikey, we have, I have three animals that need adoption. Like I'm moving to a new place and I'm not able to bring them with me. So I said, yeah, sure, we'll take them in after speaking with RJ, my partner over there, because I know how to take care of the three animals that he was willing to give us. So they're here now. And this is one of the three. You'll see the other two later. Good boy, Shoga. Okay, I'm just gonna put my shirt over, okay? Good boy, Suga. Yeah. This here is Cypher. He just had a bath. Hi, Cypher. <laughs> he smells something different in the vicinity, but he can't figure out what it is. Guys, Sahara's <laughs> looking for the sugar glider. She just had her bath. She's like, where is it? I smell it. It's around here. I know it's here. I don't know what it is. I heard it. <laughs> See? I'm going to go to the ant room right now. I'm not afraid of Shoga jumping out right now because one, it's midday and he is so sleepy. And two, that pouch that he's in right now is his safe haven, so he's not gonna hop out. All right guys, so it's been about 30 minutes um, that I've been hanging out with Shoga. I'm gonna put these extra pieces in here. Oops, sorry to wake you up. I was gonna wear him for a few hours, but I think 30 minutes right now is good enough because I want to show you guys something outside. It's what this vlog is about. Our farm lot. So just hang on. Alright Shoga. Just hang on, okay? Thank you for being nice. You were a pleasure to hang out with. Look at him peeking out. See him? Okay. Um, just hang on. Just don't unscrew this. We're going back home. Mm -hmm. I'll leave you alone after this. You can sleep in peace. And I'll see you in the evening when we feed you. Okay? Thank you for being nice. There we go. Awesome. And that was that, guys. Our first bonding session with Shoga over here. He's, you know, he is not too bad because this is exactly what the first day of bonding is like. Like, even when they're young, they just naturally are afraid of humans. Um, and they make that scary noise and they'll lunge at you with open mouth and try to scare you away, which is what they would do in the wild. But uh, this was good. Just a short session. Um, and we'll just keep doing this every day until he basically learns that we're okay and we're friends and that every time we come around, we got treats for him. All right, my Buhai squad. Now it's time to take you to our side lot because guys, as you read in the title, we are ready to farm. All right, but before we go out there, I just wanted to show you what the side lot looks like from like an, a higher level view. This, by the way, is our master bedroom. So this is our side lot, guys. All of that brown earth, that is our side lot. Um, it took two or three days to till all of that soil. 
we've been intending for years to get this side lot. We actually got this two years ago. So we first bought our home lot, right? And then I believe a year or two later, we bought the side lot. And we were really happy because we really wanted it to farm. We wanted to separate our living area from the farming area and animals area, you know, like livestock and chickens and stuff. Uh, so getting this side lot was really a dream for RJ and I. And we are so, so happy that it's finally time to develop it and start farming and doing farmer stuff. All right, let's go out there. But first look, let me sit down here. Look at how beautiful that giant peace lily. Isn't that gorgeous? That's the second flower this plant has let out. <gasps> awesome. All right, let's go. OMG guys. So this is it. The farm lot, which extends all the way to this um, barbed wire fence here is ready to be farmed on. You see that? The soil has been tilled. We're gonna add more soils in certain areas, level things out a bit more, but there is a lot of land here to do farming activities. Look guys, it continues all the way down there and even down to the hill. So I'll show you guys what our tentative plans are, which are subject to change. <laughs> and you guys gotta remember that this will be an ongoing learning curve for RJ and I. Please excuse the garbage. This needs to be cleaned. We're planning now this entire lot. I didn't realize how big it was till after they cleared away all the grass and weeds and stuff. It's big, see? I mean, look at RJ who's way down there. This is a lot of land. There's the house, right? And there's a lot of land here. There's stuff already growing here, like these papaya trees here, see? These are papaya trees. There's some fruit already on the way. Um, and I also see some Saba banana trees back there. So let me take you guys around and explain what RJ and I were just discussing in terms of what goes where, what animals go where, what like plants and stuff go where. This is what we've decided so far. So that portable there is basically storage. I think we'll be getting one more. So um, we've been looking at raised garden beds and we're thinking of putting it here in this area. Um, we'll have to work out whether or not they need shade or not, but we feel like this is a good area for the gar raised garden beds because um, we have piping that runs along here in case we can hook it up to um, automatic irrigation. So, you know, we don't have to worry about watering the plants ourselves. It can all be automated, save us time and energy. So we feel like garden beds would be awesome here. All of this central land here, we have for like, traditional farming, so crops, who knows, we could grow corn, we could grow um, a whole bunch of things, vegetables, fruits, fruit trees. We still have to plan what's gonna go there. In terms of Billy, our goat, we're hoping to build him a pen probably around here, and then also have another pen here for a cow. RJ and I are probably gonna get a cow and we'll probably have a an easy exit way here so we could lead them out to graze i hope this cow that we get can give us milk that would be really healthy in terms of a greenhouse we were considering possibly like here somewhere here uh we feel like it's a good spot because well we kind of it also has irrigation piping so we could have all of the stuff automatically watered. It also is underneath a kind of a, a tree, so it doesn't get too, too hot, but it does get light. And so I, we feel like a greenhouse would be good here. We were thinking chickens somewhere here on this side. Um, not sure yet. We still have to decide. Now this area here with all of this forest, which continues down we're gonna add more soil down here to make it a little less of a drop i requested to rj that this area be my playing field for a food forest i've been going on and on about a food forest back when we first got this mabuhai squad property um, basically it involves 
planting your fruits and veggies in a forest style, meaning like in here, I would plant my eggplants or I don't know, my fruit trees and okra and all of that. And the advantage of having your stuff growing amidst a natural forest is that you don't need to really do anything. There's like no maintenance. The soil is already fertile. The forest produces like dead leaves that fall to the ground and there's lots of the necessary life in the soil to create fertilizer for your plants. So it's really low maintenance. Um, and it's a very sustainable way of growing food. They call it permaculture. It's, it's a, one of the principles of permaculture, having a food forest. And I've always dreamed of having my own food forest. So all of this here at the back, which we also own, will be for the food forest. We could also plant native trees here in this area um, so we can further pull the forest closer to us and, you know, make use of Mother Nature's benefits of growing your food in a forest. Now, as I mentioned in a previous vlog, I wanted the aviaries, I say aviaries because I think we're going to build two here in this area here. Um, it's in a cool spot where if the aviaries high, the birds will be able to see us when we swim and when we're in the yard. So I'm thinking here and it will be taller. Uh, that might be cool and I can't wait for that. I was thinking instead of a concrete ground to keep it kind of dirt so that, you know, the poo of the birds will naturally be dealt with by like soil creatures and stuff. Um, that's my plan now. Not sure that may change, but we'll see. I was thinking the aviary here. Also, I wanted the aviary separated far from the chickens in case there's like, cause there's been known to be bird flus that go around like avian flus that can wipe out like whole chickens. So I wanted to keep them like not side by side with the chickens. So these will go here. So guys, this is all a huge learning curve. I wish I played Farmville, I didn't. <laughs> we will consult professionals but i highly feel like this farming endeavor will be a constant learning curve guys like we'll just kind of have to learn along the way and adjust and adapt and like make little changes we'll have some failures and stuff but i mean that's part of life you you learn that's what it's all about the journey my buhai squad i'm excited to get started how about you guys <gasps> It's just crazy to see it all blank now and ready. You know what I mean? It reminds me of when we were looking at the cleared empty lot before we ever started building for our Mabuhai Squad farm house. It looked like this. It was just soil. And it's been an incredible journey watching things build from just the soil up, from the ground up, literally. See? So guys, what should we grow? Ooh. Oh, and another thing I wanted to show you guys, look. This here is mango. Look how big it is. We planted this two years ago, so it's quite large. There's also another one here, strangely. I'm not sure where this came from, but I'm happy that it's growing here. Now the thing is, we gotta wait 10 years for this to bear fruit. It's gonna be a while. When we're in our 50s, we'll be able to get to eat some mangoes grown here. And then for any miscellaneous animals, maybe somewhere here, I guess. I'm not sure. Like, at one point, RJ wanted an Aldabra tortoise, and he still wants an Aldabra tortoise. So I'm guessing it will be here somewhere. If we build the iguanas a larger pen, maybe here somewhere. We already have squash growing here. See that? We have moringa here, which we've been harvesting from. See this moringa tree? This is called malungay in the Philippines. It's considered a superfood. And we harvest from it for our birds, for us when we cook like Filipino dishes like dinola and stuff. As mentioned, banana trees or saba rather. Now guys, this tree right here, tabi tabi po, is that avocado? Because a couple years back, if you guys remember, I planted like three avocado trees that were grown by like little seedlings that were started up by our friends, the Matsuyamas. So Mark, Ro, and Aaron, 
They gave it to us as gifts. And I planted them here in this area and I never saw them since. But this kind of looks like an avocado tree, is it guys? Look, and it's actually also bearing little fruits. Like look, do you guys see that? That's not avocado, is it? What is that guys? All right guys, let's visit the other pet that we recently adopted from Enrique. His name is Magnus. He was out earlier, all day actually. So he's probably retreated. Yep, there he is, I see him, I see his tail. He's retreated into his little hide here. This, by the way, is our dog run. Normally for our dogs, but we've adopted it for our iguana here. Hi, hi. Oh, he was sleeping, oops. He's still quite nervous around me. Um, he doesn't bite, he doesn't tail whip, but he does puff up when I get close. So anyways, that's him. When he's up here, like hanging out, by the at the top like this morning I saw him hanging out here when he's up here He's a bit more calm and we could get close to him and even feed him We're actually keeping him in here so he can get used to us and seeing the dogs Because this is kind of a high traffic area for all of us our team and me and RJ So uh, he sees us all the time. It's only been what three days since he's been here. So he's still getting used to us now the other the third pet is here Let's see if we can see him. He's a red-eared slider turtle. Um, and his permanent home is currently being worked on, the large pond at the back. Uh, but meanwhile, he's living here. I don't see him though. He's probably way down there. Hmm. Oh, I see him. His shell, I see a shell. It's way down there. Do you guys see a shell? I don't know if you guys could see it, but I could see it. There he is. He's coming to the surface slowly, I think. He's like, do you have super worms for me? Anyway, he's a red-eared slider turtle named Donatello. He's probably also retreating from the sun. All right, Mabuhai squad, I'm back. Gonna give him a blueberry treat. Something sweet this time. Sugar, I'm back. I, I know, it's okay. Here, want a blueberry? I got a blueberry for you. Oh my gosh, look at my dog. Sahara's begging to get in here. Sugar, come. I got a treat for you. Come on, Sugar. Okay. I got a treat for you. Come look. Look. See, it's a little blueberry. See? Yeah. The blueberry, mmm, yummy. Here, you could have the whole thing. Here you go. Here you go. You want it? It's tasty, right? Here you go. <laughs> See, it's all a, an association game. Every time I go in, he hears my voice. I have a gift. I come bearing gifts. He'll pick up on that quickly. And all of that hostility, will go away slowly. This is just the first day. Sahara, no, you can't. Not allowed. I love that we have a pet room for exotics and for our ant colonies. Yes, ant colonies. Again, if you're new, I have another channel called Ants Canada. Go check out that channel. It's about ant colonies. Um, and that's the room where we keep all of those creepy crawlies. And this here is the aviary. Where are the birds? We got parrots that live here. They're screaming at the sun, right there. Three conures, and I've got three blue-naped parrots, see there? And every time I come near the window, the conures fly down to say hi. Hi there! And Sahara's with me here too. She thinks the sugar glider's on me, no! Let's go inside the aviary now, guys. Yes, hi! Hi there! So the crimson-bellied conures up there, they're pretty common in the pet trade, in the bird pet trade, rather. Um, but these guys here, these blue-naped parrots, um, aren't. These blue-naped parrots are native to the Philippines. You're not allowed to export them. So they're not really a very common pet bird internationally. A few people in the Philippines here have them. Um, but when I got these birds, I was really happy to keep 
a species that's endemic to the Philippines, which apparently are near threatened. So us keeping them here is kind of like a cool thing, you know. The pet trade allows these birds to exist on the planet um, because their habitat is disappearing. Um, but it was a challenge because there isn't much literature online about this species just because, well, people haven't kept them much as pets. So I knew keeping these birds would be pretty important for those who do keep blue-naped parrots in the future because I've been documenting my entire journey with them and what I know about them is they're intelligent. They really are and they uh, make a lot of noise. <laughs> they're different from keeping an African Grey which I had before. I don't know, they're less bondy. I think it's because I started off with three adult birds but I don't find these birds to be bonded with me, so to speak. They're not needy. They don't need to be stroked. They don't need to be pet. Um, they don't always need to be on my body. They're not Velcro birds, as they usually call them. Birds that must be on your person at all times. Blue napes are not like that. They're kind of their own sort of agent. They're solo agents. And these crimson belly conures, of course, fairly common in the bird pet trade. They're just funny. They're clowns. I find. All right, guys, rest in peace for those of you who have earbuds and, and like um, headphones. And guys, if that kind of sound annoys your ears, don't get one. Don't get a parrot, guys, because this is just something they do. When they're happy and joyful, they scream. You just can't train it. And you don't want to train it out of a bird. It's just what they do. And in case you're wondering about the aviary, um, all the glass in our house is double-paned glass built to keep sound out. So when they do screech, it isn't too loud. Um, and our neighbors, I mean, we live in a farming estate where our whole neighborhood is basically a bunch of farms. So I wake up in the morning to the sounds of roosters crowing at like 4 a.m. You know what I mean? Like, it's not... Noise from animals is not something that we would complain about and you know Frankly, I don't ever hear the animals at all anymore It's just like I've become used to all of the background noise of like roosters in the background and stuff It's never in my ear and our guests also have never complained about roosters crowing. So that's good Actually correction. We had one of our guests staying here um, Who did complain about sounds in the night? It was our friend Megan from Korea. Uh, she said she wasn't used to the sound of nighttime insects, like, you know, crickets and that kind of thing. So we just bought her some earplugs and she was able to sleep. But that's so interesting how the insects were keeping her awake, but not like the roosters or our parrots. There he is. See him? There's Magnus sitting or basking in a small beam of light. Hi, Magnus. So he's a blue-green iguana, as in blue color phase. And look, look at his stunning colors, guys. Hi, Magnus. Don't be afraid. I'm just, I'm just here to like hang out and say hi. See him, guys? Isn't he just stunning? <laughs> so our other green iguanas are here. These two green iguanas also given to us. Um, this is the pen we built them. I don't want to put Magnus in here because I'm afraid he might um, attack the male who's Adam. This here's the female who's Eve. Hi Eve! You guys are getting fat. Wow! They're just hanging out and they get some really good sun during the mornings. It's afternoon now so they're kind of in the shade. But yeah, they're really growing guys. They're a bit younger than Magnus um, and I heard from our zookeeper friend who has hundreds of green iguanas that if the iguanas grow up together, they can be mixed. But I just have to see. So after we, after Magnus gets used to us and he's okay, we're moving him into a cage next to this iguana pen and see if there's like any sign of aggression. Like if he starts, you know, displaying um, his dewlap and if he puffs up and 
starts to like show aggression to Adam, then for sure, we, we're definitely not going to mix them. We'll have to keep them separate. Um, as you saw in the last, last vlog, we were repairing some creeks. So now it's completely been waterproofed. There's going to be a couple more layers to add after this, um, including concrete. And then we can start everything again um, and start stocking it with life, including moving Donatello in here. Awesome, right? It's right underneath our Pinoy Chalet, this cute little traditional Filipino house here. It sits over the pond and sunken garden. See, it's gonna be super duper cool. There's a waterfall here and there's also another waterfall on the other side. And it's just really, really zen. At the back is the forest. Look, let's, I'll take you to the back. You guys have seen this before. I've taken you here. Ooh. We, we have our guests come here and we put out massage beds if they want air conditioning, keep them cool. Ah, but this is my favorite part about the Pinoy Chalet, the forest observatory. See guys, see that lush forest at the back? Just great. Um, there's also a little creek. See, there's the creek guys. When it's not raining, it's the creek is clear. Wow. Are there fish there? I wonder. See, and it's not even, it's still, it's not even moving. It's basically a marsh, guys. See? Interesting. Guys, look at the size of this huge, massive leaf. It's alocasia. Huge. And I can't wait for this pond to be functional. Yay. Let's see, do we see any cool birds in the forest right now? It's a little hot. They come out like around four or five. Amazing, amazing birds. We've seen a few while hanging out here. I love these sliding doors, they're so cute. See, and the doors are made of shell. See, those are seashells. It's a very Filipino um, design, having shells called kapis. These are kapis windows and doors. And of course, everything is smart, see? It's all screens. I would really love to wake up there one morning. That would be cool. This here is our farm cat, Melody. Hi, Melody. We, recent, we recently spayed her, see? Looks like the wound is healing, the incision. All right, go sleep. All right, guys, it is evening now. Well, getting close to it anyway. It's around close to 5 p.m. And the pool is calling. Yes, let's get in. See how warm this water is, guys. Ah, the best. Oh, oh my gosh. This is honestly the best temperature of water. It's like warm, but not hot. Not cold at all. Ah, oh, that's refreshing. All right, my boys, what I'm gonna do my cardio. I'll see you in a sec. Guys, the clouds today are stunning. A lot of them are are closer to the ground than usual. Like, see this huge cloud? It seems closer than usual than most clouds. I love swimming, looking up at the sky with my ears underwater. Everything's so peaceful. And the sky is just like a work of art. A changing work of art. It's just magnificent. I honestly marvel at the sky. Like, I think we take certain things in life for granted. If you look up at the sky, like on a sunny day, and check out the clouds, it's really like awesome. Like look how huge that cloud is. It's huge, massive. And it's like condensed water, right? Just float, floating in the sky, a massive, huge cloud. Like it's, wow, like look how huge that is. Here, let me keep still so you can see it moving. It is crazy. Hey, Rizal. 
This is Rizal, our standard poodle. <laughs> and Brittany, our Mexican hairless, is somewhere, also running around the yard. Brittany! Where are you, Brittany? I love swimming at this time because look at the light. See how the light just spills across the pool? It just looks so, so beautiful. There's beauty everywhere. Everywhere you look, beauty. Nature's awesome. All right, guys, I have been in here for well over an hour. I got wrinkly fingers and hands. It's time to get out as much as I want to just stay here. Um, but I was able to do my meditations, my prayers, discussions to God in the universe. This is where it happens, guys. This is where that happens for me. And I feel the most in tuned with my spirit. A lot of you guys were asking, where's your altar? Because here in the Philippines, mostly Catholic country, right? Um, we have like a dedicated place of worship usually like with statues and statue of baby Jesus and all of that but this for me is my altar we do have um, a dedication prayer station uh, altar in the seniors room of our house on the first floor and we have a few religious items around the home as well as in our bedroom but for me guys this is like this is my church here I'm not sure what it is guys something about the water which makes me feel like I'm connected with the creator of the universe. How about you guys? All right, guys, and we are preparing for dinner. Tonight we have something special, guys. Scallops. Mmm. Awesome protein. We also have kangkong right here, which is, um, the English term for it is water spinach. Very common uh, vegetable here in Southeast Asia. Um, and we're going to grow our own, guys, in our pond <laughs> in the back. It apparently grows profusely in water so it'll be awesome to finally grow our own kangkong our iguanas eat this our parrots eat this we eat this so it's a very nutritious nutrient dense veggie see dark leaf high in potassium and magnesium as well which is great and mixed with the scallops is some shrimp mmm and guys look what else Woo! oh my gosh that was hot look at that Tuna, guys. Oh, baked tuna. That's gonna be so yummy. And broccoli. Yes, blanched broccoli. Yes, healthy. And of course, rice. We Filipinos eat everything with rice. Oh my gosh, guys. Look at how succulent that seafood looks. Mmm. <gasps> it's been pan fried with garlic. Freshly chopped garlic. I see peppers on there. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, this looks delicious. RJ Garcia, thank you. And Ate LC, thank you. Guys, I love people who can cook. Look. Okay, so one is tuna, one is mahi mahi. Okay, so let's try the mahi mahi. Oh, and we have fresh herbs. Basil from the garden, awesome. And here's the tuna. Let's try this tuna. Oh man, perfect. Perfect protein. Look at that. Mm. All right, and some coconut water. Mm. More potassium, electrolytes, nature's Gatorade, right? After a whole hour of swimming. Okay, let's try this food, Mabuhai Squad. Here we go. First thing I'm trying are these scallops. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Gotta have a blast of rice with that. Mmm. 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 Mm. Oh my gosh, guys. It's been so long since I've had scallops. Mm. Alright, let's try the tuna. You have it with a little bit of rice. Mmm. Tuna's good. Mmm. Not fishy tasting at all. I was afraid it would be. Here's the mahi mahi. Mmm. 
Mmm, juicy. You like it too? I think you're okay. RJ likes the mahi mahi. Mmm. All right. Now to try the shrimps. What did we cook this with, Beth? Garlic and olive oil. No butter. Even though butter is healthy, supposedly. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Mmm. That's gonna go good with some egg. Mmm. Wow, guys. With a blast of this piece of garlic. Wow. Mmm. Man, that garlic is so good with it. Did you add like fish sauce or oyster sauce? Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Mabuhai squad. This healthy meal, five Mabuhai stars. What's up, Mabuhai squad? How are you doing? Did you sleep well? I hope so. Guys, it's a brand new day. We're heading somewhere very special. Now, um, I wanted to end this vlog because it's been a long epic vlog now. Um, there are the parrots screaming. But for those of you who made it to the end of the vlog, thank you so, so much for watching. Really appreciate the support. Um, and if you enjoyed today's vlog, be sure to hit the like button as it really helps us a lot. It lets YouTube know that our vlogs are worth sharing to new audiences. And if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Come join our Mabuhai squad. We will be your regular dose of positive vibes online. Yes. Okay, Mabuhai squad. So, like I said, RJ and I are now heading somewhere special. And this place that we're going to now is...